to talk all things Michael Jordan because we are all patiently awaiting the release of the Last Dance documentary. Talking about his final year with the Bulls. And just this morning, Michael Jordan said that that last season in Chicago was a trying year. He also said that GM Jerry Krause told Phil Jackson that the team could go 82-0, but he'd still not get the chance to come back. And Michael Jordan was not going to play without being coached by Phil Jackson. Skip, you were there. Could you believe this was happening? Jenny, Shannon, 1998, I was the columnist for the Chicago Tribune. It was the greatest year of my career, and yet it was the most astounding of my career because what I was seeing unfold right before my very eyes. And remember, I had witnessed Jimmy Johnson and Jerry Jones falling apart after winning two Super Bowls together in Dallas, and this topped that. And lately, obviously, we've seen what happened between Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. I believe this topped even that. I got to know that year, Michael Jordan and Phil Jackson and a guy named Jerry Krause. Jerry Krause, for those who don't know or don't remember, was a chubby little guy with an ego even bigger than Michael Jeffrey Jordan's. Jerry Krause had played a little high school baseball growing up in Chicago and had started basically as a baseball scout in the White Sox organization owned by Jerry Reinsdorf, who also owned the Chicago Bulls. For reasons nobody could figure out, Jerry Reinsdorf elevated Jerry Krause to be the GM of Michael Jordan's Bulls. Jerry Krause did not draft Michael Jordan. He came the year after Rod Thorne drafted Michael in 84. Jerry Krause started in 85. And as slowly but surely the thing grew into the Bulls dynasty, Jerry Krause came to despise Phil Jackson because Phil Jackson had little to no respect for this little guy who thought, as Phil told me, he thinks he's the alpha of this dynasty? What? He's, he's out of his mind. So Phil would openly ridicule little Jerry Krause in front of everybody to the point that when they signed their last one-year deal, as Jenny read, Jerry Krause told Phil Jackson, you could go 82-0 and 0 next year and I ain't bringing you back. Well, guess what? Michael Jordan had pledged public allegiance to Phil Jackson. If he goes, I go. And Shannon, I, I just couldn't believe that Michael was going to actually <laughs> quit if, in fact, Jerry Krause actually fired Phil Jackson and prematurely blew up the dynasty. But it, you know and I know that's exactly what happened. And it got so bad that the summer going into that last dance year, that's what Phil called it, the last dance, Jerry Krause's daughter got married in Chicago and he had the audacity to invite Tim Floyd, the coach at Iowa State that everybody knew Jerry loved and wanted to bring in as the Bulls coach, to the wedding and did not invite Phil Jackson to the wedding. That's how bad it got. And yet, Shannon, I still couldn't believe Michael was actually going to quit over this, and he did. And my final point to you, Shannon, and then I'll hand it to you, is that Two weeks after the season ended, which with obviously the last shot holding the pose at Utah in game six, sixth championship, sixth MVP in the finals for Michael Jordan, I was walking with Michael in a pro-am golf tournament that he was playing in Chicago. He, he asked me to come inside the ropes with him. And on one of the holes on a par five, he hit his tee shot into a fairway bunker and ask his caddy for his three wood. And Shannon, you know enough about golf through your older brother, Sterling, yeah. to try to hit a three wood out of a fairway bunker is a really hard golf shot. And I said to him, <laughs> Michael, that's, that's a tough one. And Michael said to me, no, it's not tough. I'll just imagine that the ball is Jerry Krause's face. It came to that. I'm going to hit that. And by the way, <laughs> Michael nailed the shot and almost made it in two <laughs> shots to the green because he's envisioning I'm going to whack Jerry Krause in the face on my golf ball. That's how bad it got in 1998 in Chicago. 
Well, Skip, you were there, and we heard the same things that no matter what had transpired, that they weren't coming back, that, he, you know, two three-peats was, was not going to be enough for Phil Jackson to retain his job. And Michael Jordan has said, I'm not playing for another coach. Now, Skip, at the time, I had never met, my, uh, I had only met Michael Jordan once, but I didn't really know a whole lot about him, hadn't spent a lot of time, and didn't know a whole lot of people. But after being around him just a little bit, knowing people that spend a lot of time, I am absolutely not surprised he didn't come back. Skip, you know one thing about that man. That man is stubborn as a mule, as a bull. And once he tells you something, or once he says he dislikes you, he has nothing else to do with you. If he feels you've crossed him, Skip, remember, when Charles Barkley criticized him, not the player, but criticized like, Mike, you got too many yes men around you. That was it. Done. He and Charles have been friends, you know, play golf together, go to Vegas, yada, yada, yada. That was it. But, Skip, the thing is, is that what we start, what we see, and you're, old, you're older than I am, and so you covered sports, and you know things about dynasties. The thing that kept the Bulls together from a player standpoint is that nobody thought they were Michael Jordan's equal. What broke the Warriors up, Skip, we're going to talk about this a little later, was, was the infighting and the, 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 that KD didn't feel he was getting the praise and adulation that Steph Curry got. Tyree and LeBron, Kyrie felt he was on a level with LeBron. He wanted to show he can lead his own team. Kobe and Shaq, well, Michael never had that. Scottie Pippen and Rodman and B.J. Armstrong, none of those guys felt there was Jordan equal. But there was someone that felt he was the equal as far as the general manager and was not getting the credit that he deserved. And that was Jerry Krause. And normally, Skip, what happens is general manager and owner or coach and owner, we don't really never see it get to this level like this where we're having a level of success that's really unprecedented outside of maybe the 60 uh, uh, Celtics. And then for a, as you mentioned, Jerry Krause couldn't have been much more than 5'3", five, 5'4", five, uh, rotund, and all of a sudden, you want the credit? Not one, you didn't take one dribble, you didn't take one shot, you didn't take one screen, take on one screen, fight over the top of a screen, and you want credit. I've never seen anything like it, Skip. I, I've never seen, and I still haven't to this day, seen a general manager that basically sits up in the stand. Jerry West, and we know a lot of the general managers from Jerry West to Ozzie Newsom in different sports. Skip, they sit, uh, Theo Epstein, they sit up in the stands and they're fine. But Jerry Krause wanted the credit, Skip, because he knew this, they chronicle dynasties. And he wanted to be chronicled in a favorable manner. Well, this, I put this together. And Skip, he went out of his way. If Michael Jordan says, we need a T-shirt, he went and bought a jock strap. If Michael Jordan said, we need a Gatorade, he went and bought Coca-Cola. That's how he was. It was like he did things in spite of Mike. I've never seen anything like it. And Shannon, you played pro football for a long time and you played for two different mm -hmm. franchises, two different owners. Correct. And yet you saw your friends on other teams and you saw mm -hmm. how the game is really played off the field, the big business that yes. can be pro sports. It yes. still starts at the top. It starts with a Jerry Reinsdorf, owner of White Sox and Bulls, making the choice, the decision to say, I'm going to put little Jerry Krause, because I, I get a kick out of Jerry. He's kind of like me. We're kind of brothers. We're mm -hmm. kind of birds of a feather <laughs> from Chicago. We came up the hard way together. And he said, I'm, I'm going to put little Jerry Krause in charge of the Bulls, and I'm going to give him full authority. He can hire. He can fire. He can trade. He can do whatever he wants to run the Chicago Bulls. I will not interfere. He has full autonomy to pull the plug on that dynasty, Jerry Reinsdorf allowed that little man with that huge overblown ego to prematurely end what, what I think was the greatest dynasty. We're going to debate this a little later in the show. But he pulled the plug on it and got away with it over personal differences with a coach who publicly ridiculed him in front of other front office staffers and humiliated him. So. He was allowed right. to do that, and that's the essence to me of pro sports. Michael Jordan, to me, was the greatest player ever. You think it's LeBron, I think it's mm -hmm. Michael, but, but as a performer, he was 
something. I, I keep thinking back what Stefan Marbury said a couple of days ago, that he was not from the earth. That's how I viewed him in 1998, getting to know him, being around him on a daily basis. And to think that this is the way pro sports work, that that little guy sitting up in that office who barely played high school baseball can prematurely end the dynasty and the career of Michael Jordan, that, that's it. it. It was enlightening to me. It was an awakening for me. It was, it was sad to me that that, in the end, is how it was going to work. And yet, to your point, whether you call it pride or stubborn pride, Michael Jordan stuck by his guns, and he did not play basketball for three years after that because mm -hmm. he was Phil's guy. And if Phil's gone, I'm gone. And Phil, Phil went on, obviously, to coach the Lakers, and Michael did not go on to play again for three years until he went to the Wizards late. Yeah, and Skip, the, the thing is, is that Michael being who he was, and I felt that we don't know. Uh, and, you know, we're going to talk about this a little later. But as Michael said, has said many a times, he believed they should have been allowed to come back until someone beat them. Not give it up, not give up the reins, not abdicate the throne, make someone knock us off the throne. And Jerry Reinsdorf and Jerry Krause allowed this to happen because, as you said, Skip, Jerry Reinsdorf is the owner. And Krause was acting at the behest. It was like, you have total autonomy. You want to trade a player, trade, trade said player. If you want to, you know, get rid of this guy, or do whatever you want to do. And like I said, Skip, there was times, you, you know this firsthand because you were there, you covered the team. There were times that Michael would want a certain player. And it was almost seemed like that Jerry Krause would get the antithesis of said player just to spite, oh, you want him? Oh, you really want him? And this is like, okay, the Bulls about to trade. And it's like, I don't think Michael wanted that guy. But that's, Skip, Normally when players, they bicker back and forth, the owner or the general manager would say, figure it out. Skip, how did the owner tell the general manager and the head coach or the general manager and the best player, y'all get in the room and figure it out, when the general manager feels that he has so much control? You know, really, really Phil, <laughs> you, your, your, your coach is in, in Chicago is in my hands. Michael, I'll, Skip, Jerry Krause knew what Michael would do if he took Phil away. He wanted that because he wanted to show that he was the show. He knew Michael would leave. If you've been around Michael for any length of time, and a lot of the people that I've talked to have been around him for a, a length of time, if he says something, take it to the bank. And Jerry Krause knew that. That's why he said, even if he goes 82 and 0, he knew Michael would walk. He wanted Michael to walk. He wanted to get more. Skip. Now, it's a situation, as you mentioned, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. If I win without that guy, what now? I didn't need Michael Jordan. I didn't need Phil Jackson. I'm winning championships with Tim Floyd, which you and I both know was never going to happen, that Michael Jordan was the driving force. Michael Jordan was the end. Okay, yeah, Scottie Pippen was a tremendous player. Michael Jordan was the engine. No car is going anywhere without the engine. I don't care what type of tires or what kind of body it has. It's not going anywhere. And Michael Jordan was that. But Jerry Krause refused to see that, Skip, because he wanted the credit. Skip, and that happens a lot. It happens a lot. I'm surprised. I'm, well, I'm not surprised because there was no equal on that team. But, Skip, most of, the most of the times when we see dynasties, it's normally the players. When a player says, I am the equal to the top billing, and if I go somewhere else and show you, I can show you what I can do. And so that's what we've seen happen between some of these dynasties that we think ended prematurely. But this dynasty ended because of Jerry Krause and his ego. He felt he deserved and wanted more credit, so he broke it up. And to your point, Shannon, there were a couple of times when Jerry Krause did save Michael from his Carolina self, because there were a couple of times <laughs> that Michael wanted a Tar Heel that, that, you know, to bring in, such as Al Wood. He wanted Al Wood badly. Jerry Krause said, no, he can't play, and he went a different direction. But there were other times when Jerry Krause overruled the basketball staff, Phil Jackson. They all wanted Johnny Dawkins out of Duke that you'll remember. And Yes, no, he wanted Brad Sellers. So Jerry Krause took Brad Sellers, who was a bust. So, so it worked both Ohio ways. State, but if I'm not mistaken. The point was, 
Yeah, and the, the point was that in the end, Michael Jordan put Jerry Krause on the map. Everybody in Chicago and everybody around the NBA knew who Jerry Krause was just because he was the GM for Michael Jordan. So in the end, he, he gets remembered for pulling the plug. And, and here's my case that I'll make to you, Shannon. Remember, Michael took the next three years off, and I think they were still into prime years. Maybe he had two more into prime years, age 35 and 36. Remember, Tony Kukoc, mm -hmm. who was a key cog on that team, he played eight more years. Scottie Pippen, who was the second best player, obviously, on the team, played six more NBA years. You look at Dennis Rodman, who was the key piece rebounding, below the rim rebounder. He psychologically blew himself up. He had all kinds of problems, you know, off the court. But he went on mm -hmm. to play for the Lakers and the Mavericks the next couple of years and averaged 11 rebounds for the Lakers and 14 for the Mavericks in fairly short stints. But I still think you had two more years of Dennis Rodman in Chicago under Phil and Michael who could have kept him between the lines and inbounds, I think, for maybe two more years. And then we go down to Steve Kerr, played for five more years. Ron Harper played for three more years. And the two big guys, Luke Longley and Bill Winnington, played three and two years, respectively. So my point is, yeah, they could have kept this together for two. I, I think they could have won two more championships, which would have brought it to a total of eight. And, and I believe Michael was still playing at a peak level. He was obviously the MVP of that last finals. He made first team all defense that year in 98, led the league in scoring in 98. Yeah, I think he had two more championship years in him, and that dynasty got it got blown up prematurely. You know, Skip, Jerry Krause is a coach, a coach was told a player, uh, I was on the team and a coach told a player, he said, son, you're like, like the final piece of the puzzle. And if someone doesn't let you put that piece down, you will mess the whole damn puzzle up. If that's what Jerry Krause did, Skip, he was a piece of the puzzle. But what, because they would let him be the last piece, which he deemed the most important piece, he was willing to mess the whole damn puzzle up. Why? You got something great going on. Now, Skip, look, once you have won that much, and we're talking about him, so Jerry Krause is getting what he wanted. He's getting the, even though it's not the, you know, the, the, the adulation, we're actually talking about him. And Skip, he does deserve some credit. He drafted Scottie Pippen. He got he made the trade uh, uh, for Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr was originally with the Cavaliers, and he brought in a lot of these pieces. He, he traded Charles Oakley, for, uh, if I'm not mistaken, for Cartwright. So Skip, he did some good things. Okay, that's your that. But you're not on the court playing. It's the players. It's the coaches. The day to day. You're not in meetings. You're not in practice every day. So. He wanted something, Skip, that he was never going to get. And no matter how great a guy is, Skip, look, the Steelers guy, I forget his name, uh, in 74 that he drafted his first four picks all went to the Hall of Fame. Took Lynn Swan, he took Mike Webster, he took, uh, you know, Jack Lambert, uh, John Starworth, Mike Webster. Skip, nobody remembers who he was. It's about all about the players. It's about Chuck Noll. It's about the, that's what it's about. And Jerry Krause wasn't willing to accept that, Skip. I just I don't know if they could have continued, and we're going to talk about this. I don't know if they could have continued to win, but they should not have been forced to abdicate the throne, kick their butts out of the kingdom. If you beat them, okay, it's done. Nah, we're not giving you enough a chance to you know to bring it back. And okay, that was just one time that was you know one time that we lost. We had been six and zero. No, you're done. Give them that, but Skip to just break it up over pettiness and over ego. I didn't, I didn't think that was right. So do you disagree that they could have won two more? You don't think they could have? Skip, Michael was 35. Scotty Pippen was, uh, was yeah, 35. Pitt was 32. And remember, you said he had a back issue that was really bad. And we don't know. Skip, there's a difference between playing eight more years and then playing eight more years with that kind of scrutiny. There's a difference between playing six years and then playing six years with that intensity and that expectation. You know what happens. Expectations ages people. Look at President Obama had jet black hair when he took office. And then when he left, his hair was snow white like Frederick Douglass. So, Skip, we know what expectations and the expectation of winning championship because once you win, nothing else matters. It's not about going 70 and 12. And you know when the title, the title was what they were chasing. And that's a lot to put on a man's plate. 
And so I, it's easy to say, but Skip, I'm going to say this before we get to the, um, we're going to talk about this later. Everybody thought it was a foregone conclusion. The Golden State Warriors was going to three-peat. And they were going to be, and they are, was going to be one of the great dynasties in modern time. And then a funny thing happened. KD's Achilles all of a sudden unraveled, and KD's knee unraveled. And we see what happens. So, Skip, that's wishful thinking. We'll never know. We've seen this before, Skip. If this guy hadn't got traded or said player hadn't had retired or went to a different team, ain't no telling how many. But, man, that injury bug is the great neutralizer, and then you never, ever know. Well, obviously, Michael Jordan had the one injury early to his foot and stayed healthy the rest of the way. So I, he did not have an injury history, so I think he would have been, knock on wood, okay. But I, I still think, Shannon, that they had enough life and enough legs left and enough pride that they could have won a couple of more. So I, I'll sum this up for you by leaving you with one quick story about a clash that I had with Jerry Krause, and I had many, many conflicts with him because he was so out of line, but I wrote one piece that he really did not like, and I happened to bump into him as he was coming out of the restroom, and I was going into the restroom at the, the Coliseum in Charlotte after a playoff game. He pulled me aside and he said, how could you write that about me? How could you do that to my family? I said, Jerry, I, I honestly... I don't care about your family. I care about this Bulls family. How could you break up this family? You're about to explode it. That's what you should care about is the Bulls family right now. And he, he wouldn't, that, that was the last words that I spoke to Jerry Krause. Well, see, Skip, at the end of the day, he, was, he wasn't thinking about the other people's family. Only thing he was concerned about was his own family. What about those families that was going to be broken up and going to be having to go different places? And I guess he he thought that was a part of the business. Like, you know, me doing what I do, that's a part of the business. Well, you have to understand what you do is a part of the business also is that you write articles. Sometimes they praise, sometimes they criticize. You got to be willing to accept the good with the bad. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.